Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 2. So let's start our chapter with the first approach we have, that is the Lewis approach of chemical bonding. Let's understand the Lewis approach for the chemical bonding. So as I told, chemical bonding is something which exists in nature and there are various theories to uh, explain this chemical bonding. The first approach was the Lewis approach. So what this guy did was he assumed that the nucleus plus the inner electrons as one kernel. Please note the nucleus plus inner electrons were one kernels and the outer shell electrons it says that it could accommodate at the max eight electrons. Please note that this is not true, not true for all case in real life. But this is a theory to explain and this explains most of the chemical bonding. Because we have scenarios where this, this uh, theory is proved to be wrong. This theory says that the nucleus plus inner electron is kernel. If you see these are the kernels and it can accumulate at the max 8 electrons, the outer shell. So if you see the lithium for example has only one outermost electron, lithium has only one electron. Sodium also if you see has only one outermost electron. Why? Because sodium configuration if you see it is 2, 8, 1. Correct? So in case of sodium these electrons are my inner electron. The outermost electron is only one. So what we are saying is that the kernel is both my nucleus and the inner electron. So in case of both sodium and lithium, the outermost electron is 1. Correct. So, beryllium, if you see, has two outermost electron. Magnesium also has two outermost electron. So, the kernel in this case of magnesium is the magnesium uh, nucleus plus the inner electrons. Thus, if you see the lithium and sodium look same, beryllium magnesium look same, boron aluminium look same in the Lewis approach. Carbon silicon also looks same, uh, though they have different number of electrons, but the outer number of electrons both for both carbon and silicon is same. Right? Because this guy is saying that this theory says that the nucleus plus the inner electron is one kernel, and the one in the purple is my kernel. This is my kernel. Right? These are my kernels. So the outermost electrons is something which matters the most for this approach. Please note. Only the outermost electrons matters for this approach and that's why there is no difference in beryllium and magnesium or boron and aluminium or copper and silicon or nitrogen and phosphorus. Similarly, oxygen and sulfur there is no difference as far as this Lewis approach is concerned because both have same number of outer electrons. So if you see neon and argon, they have same number of outer electrons and this says that this can have max, at the max 8 electrons, outermost electrons. So if you see Argon has 8 outermost electrons and neon has 8 outermost electrons. This is the max they have, have the outermost electron. This is what this theory says. Correct? And then he also further assumed that these 8 electrons occupy the corner of a cube. That's why you see I made a cubical uh, uh, structure. So these occupy the corner of the cube. This is what this theory says. This theory proposed that this occupies, but actually it is not. If you know, if you see the quantum uh, model, we see that these electrons keep jumping here and there, right? There is no uh, fixed uh, cube or cuboid kind of shape where these electrons are. But this theory proposed that uh, just to understand the chemical bonding, let's assume that this is the scenario. It's all assumption. Please note, all assumption. Correct. And you also propose the octet of electron, that is eight electrons in the outermost shell outermost shell so octet of outermost shell electrons you can say and this represents stable electronic configuration this is what it was proposed by this Lewis approach why because he told that all the noble gas neon argon and all they have eight electrons in the outermost shell and they are stable and so he assumed that if you have eight electrons in the outermost shell you attain a stable electronic configuration. Again, please don't just a proposal. Right? 
and he also proposed that in fact he postulated that these atoms they achieve stable octet when they are linked by a chemical bond example if you see these case this guy a has seven electrons in the outermost shell b has also seven electrons in the outermost shell when they combine the electron is shared this these i'll write i'll make it blue or red the one which is shared these electron are shared right they are sh shared actually so this is a shared electron there is no electron here sorry yeah so it is shared and both a uh, both these uh, let's suppose atom 1 and this atom 2 atom 1 atom 2 atom 1 atom 2 so both these atom 1 and 2 thinks that it has eight electrons and both these feels that they have got this stable configuration by sharing right and that's what uh, that's how they form the chemical bond this is again Lewis postulation this is what uh, a way to understand the chemical bond this may not be correct actually but this is a way to understand this chemical bond and it actually helps us to understand the chemical bond a little easier we'll, we'll explain the better type of uh, approach to understand the chemical bond this is a very basic approach to a chemical bond and this actually helps us uh, have a fair idea of chemical bonding right so please let me uh, uh, repeat this once again he assumed that there is something called kernel which has uh, my nucleus plus inner electrons and the outer shell electrons can have maximum one uh, minimum one and maximum eight uh, uh, electrons right and he assumed that this kernel is surrounded by is is in a cube like structure and these eight edges of the cube occupy these outermost electrons and uh, each and every atom they want to attain the stable configuration and i say stable configuration he mean octet electrons in the outermost shell and this they can achieve by sharing of electrons in the chemical bond and they and this is one example they have they, he showed was there are two atoms one and two they both combined this both had seven electrons each in the outermost shell and they combined to form this kind of uh, molecule this is a molecule now right so this is two atoms they form a molecule and this molecule both these uh, atoms have eight electrons correct so bo they both have shared this these two electrons are shared so uh, to achieve the stable state he proposed that there can be a covalent bond that is by sharing of electrons or an ionic bond that is by transfer of electron for example i explained this uh, covalent for example chlorine if you see it has seven electrons in the outermost shell right four seven electrons and you know that chlorine exists in cl2 molecule form so what this guy does is there's one more chlorine molecule which also has seven electrons a pairing happens between these two electrons right so this chlorine assume that it has eight electrons and these chlorine also assumes that it has eight electrons if you see that right so both assumes it has eight. for example if you see this chlorine one it has seven plus one eight electrons this chlorine has uh, seven plus one eight electrons so both assume that they have eight electrons and they form a bond this kind of bond is called covalent bond when there is a sharing of electron for a transfer of electron i can take example of sodium chloride sodium chloride also if you see exist in NaCl form generally sodium doesn't exist in Na or Cl form independently they exist in NaCl form why because sodium has one extra electron and chlorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell so for sodium to achieve electronic uh, stability if it can lose one electron it can achieve the stable configuration for because the moment it lose the one electron the next shell which it has the sodium if you see is atomic number 11 2 8 1 is electronic configuration if it lose one electron here it will reach the octet rule according to the Lewis approach so it will become stable so it will lose one electron it will give one electron to this guy and it will develop a positive charge and since chlorine will get one electron it will get 
a negative charge. So it will be sodium ion and chlorine ion, right? Because the moment it gains one electron, it will get a negative charge and it will be eight electrons now. Now, since there is a positive charge here and negative charge here, it will attract each other and they will form a bond. This kind of bond is called ionic bond, where you actually transfer the electron. In this first case, we share the electron because nobody is willing to give electron. Chlorine has seven, it just want one extra electron to be stable, so it won't give up. So nobody is giving, willing to give up, so they will share. So in this case, uh, sodium chloride, uh, sodium is willing to give an electron to achieve stability because uh, it will uh, attain a more stable configuration. Chlorine is ready to take electron to achieve stability. So this is a mutual benefit if the sodium transfers one electron to chlorine and that happens. And so sodium chlorine is formed. So there are two different kind of bonds, ionic, covalent and ionic. And this is explained by the Lewis approach. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.